halftime report is presented by GMAC Smart Lease. Want low monthly payments on a new GM vehicle? Call 1-800-32-SMART. Florida State with a second quarter explosion, leading Georgia Tech in the ACC by 25. Well, 32 straight times that they've met, Notre Dame beat Navy. And yes, the service academies are having a great season, and it's a wonderful story. But even going to another continent, it doesn't matter what happens. Notre Dame's going to beat Navy. An NCAA record, 33 straight times it's happened. Here's one of the reasons why. Chris McCoy has hit the Navy quarterback fumbles. Corey Miner knocked him down. Ronaldo win picked it up and took it in. Notre Dame won 54-27 at 4... At 47-21, Lou Holtz went for two, and Charlie Weatherby was absolutely unhappy about that after the game. Kirk, what about Washington's well, win in the Pac-10? Washington, with their win today, good chance to end 9-2 and two and play Colorado in the Cotton Bowl. Speaking of the Buffs, Coy Detmer, school record 457 yards, passing and Lee in the Big Ten, Iowa beats Illinois. Mark it down number two on your calendar. Iowa will beat Northwestern next week at Iowa City. Good thing it's a new month. My calendar's packed already. <laughs> NC State, North Carolina, and the ACC. North Carolina, you Florida State fans know how tough they can be. They do it all on special teams as well. Leon Johnson's a special player. Takes it from the 39. It was a short punt, and he took advantage of it. Third of four touchdowns on the day. North Carolina rolls 52-20. to Chris Keldorf, three touchdown passes for the four straight game. Virginia beat Duke. George Welsh unhappy. Says team wasn't inspired because the, nobody in the crowd there in Durham. It was hard to get up for the game. Southern Miss beat Cincinnati at Tulane wins tonight. Southern Miss will win Conference USA. Wyoming handles SMU. Lee Syracuse beat Don Nealon's West Virginia team that scored with 15 seconds left in the game. You know that devastating loss to West to Miami by West Virginia took a lot out of those guys. Boy, they played with very little emotion. Two more punts blocked. A Syracuse punt return for a touchdown today in Morgantown. UTEP and BYU. Let's take you out to the WAC for the kickoff to open the second half with BYU up 12-3. The die is cast. James die. Oh, great block downfield on the kicker. The fourth Cougar in history to run a touchdown back on a kickoff 100 yards. BYU rolls on, beating UTEP by the score of 40 to 18. Next, they play Rice, Kirk. Don't look now, but that option attacked four consecutive games with over 400 yards. Remember, you'll see Air Force tonight on ESPN, and next week, Air Force Army will be part of these other games that you see, ABC's regional action, college football, at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Warwick Dunn, star on any network he plays on. This explosion helped turn the tide a little bit. Florida State has a big lead on Georgia Tech. a good window remodeling plan, anybody can get in a little too deep. Before you remodel, plan ahead at your Anderson Window Center store, where we'll guide you through everything, from replacing windows to putting in patio doors. At Anderson Window Centers, we help create all the home you want to come home to. Your Anderson Window Center is Taylor Window and Door Company, 720 Capital Circle Northeast. Introducing FMB Homeline, the convenient home equity line of credit you access with a check. Homeline offers affordable terms, quick approval, tax saving potential, and no points or closing costs. Homeowners who qualify can use cash for any good reason. College, home improvements, a new car. Apply for your FMB Homeline home equity line of credit at any FMB location. We'll be there for all the days in your life. An FMB Bank member FDIC met the challenges of their time in history. Tomorrow's leaders are no different. They'll need complex skills and sound ideals to shape the 21st century. At Georgia Tech, we're preparing students for the world to come with an education that goes beyond traditional boundaries to an even bigger picture. Georgia Tech is for dreamers and doers. We give tomorrow's leaders the tools they'll need for their time in history and some time to let their hair down. Football in the Atlantic Coast Conference has a proud heritage, and our institutions have had a great deal of success on the field. In the decade of the 90s, the ACC is the only conference to have all nine schools play in postseason bowl games, with Georgia Tech and Florida State winning national championships. Academically, six ACC schools were cited by the CFA for having a better than 70% graduation rate, the most ever by any conference. The Atlantic Coast Conference is committed to athletic and academic excellence. More scores and highlights from the day in the Big 12. Big battle of running backs. June Henley and Troy Davis. 
but a pass is the big play. This touchdown pass to Isaac Bird helps Kansas come from behind and win 34-31. Henley at 226. Back off the suspension, you see Davis's numbers. Texas A&M finally gets a win, beating Oklahoma State. A&M now 4-5 and five on the season. Watson Brown, UAB coach. Coaches against his old school. They be coached at and lost by 16. In the ACC, Watch out for Clemson now. The Tigers are coming on. They're 5-3 and three overall, 4-2 and two in the conference. They shut down Maryland. The Turtles are just 1-4 and four on the road this season. Memphis held to 167 total yards as Louisville gets the winning conference, USA. Back to the Big Ten earlier today on ESPN. Wisconsin jumped out to a 24-0 lead and had to hold on to beat Purdue and get a first conference win. New Mexico beat Tulsa 34-23. That game played in Tulsa. Lobos lost four of five coming in, but get a big win today. In progress at halftime, San Diego State looking to get to 3-1. And, and the WAC keep their slim bowl hopes alive, leading San Jose State by 12. And Army, great start rolls on. They're now 8-0, best start since 1950. They beat Lafayette by 20 and play Air Force next week. The Force is with us tonight. Air Force taking on Colorado State. Important whack game. It's our doubleheader. It comes up after the second half. Florida State, Georgia Tech. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1 800 32 SMART. About Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Don't let a new truck payment stretch you to the limit. Call 1-800-32-SMART about Smart Lease by GMAC. It keeps new vehicles well within reach. It starts with a full quarter pound of beef with fresh toppings, our chef sauce on a bakery soft roll, McDonald's Arch Deluxe. If it were any more grown up, we'd need to check your ID. It's McDonald's with a grown up taste. Sears is filled to capacity with tires for whatever you drive. And right now, all Goodyear tires are on sale at the lowest prices of the season. Only at our garage, the Sears Auto Center. The state of Florida was only 10 years old when Thomas Jefferson's grandson, the city mayor, helped to establish the seminary west of the Suwami. Today, his legacy rests on the oldest continuous site of higher education in Florida. For nearly 150 years, we have sought to preserve the Jeffersonian ideals of public education and citizenship through the world's newest technologies and its oldest traditions, physically, mentally, morally. We are the keepers of the flame at Florida State University. Back on the GMAC Halftime Report, in the Ivy League, Columbia missed a field goal with 49 seconds left. Their first loss of the season, Dartmouth is now undefeated and atop the conference. And Brown is lurking right behind, 3-1 and one in the conference now. They won at Cornell today. Some records set. Division Three Hartwick, A.J. Pitterino ran for 443rd yards in one game. That's never happened at any level of college football. And Jesse Schwerta of New Haven is throwing 234 straight passes without a pick. That, too, is a record. Reminder, this time tomorrow night, Sunday Night NFL, back where it belongs on ESPN. Jerry Rice, three catches from 1,000, takes on the Saints. Kickoffs at 8 Eastern. Game time after prime time tomorrow. The second half after this. Congratulations. You bought some new office equipment. Do you trust the company who sold it to you to back it up? Some companies have made promises to back you up, but that's all they've made. Only one company has delivered on their promises year after year. That's why they're the number one place to buy office machines in Tallahassee. Monk's Office Machine Center. We deliver what others promise. Today, beepers are used almost everywhere. Every day, by everyone. Not restricted just to business. Families have discovered the versatility and convenience of the beeper. Here at Beepers of Limited, we offer a wide range of beepers at great prices. Beepers Unlimited makes owning a beeper practical and affordable for everyone.
sports at an NCAA Division I or II school. You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Get one of these student release forms from your coach or guidance counselor and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in Division I or II. For more information, call toll-free 800-638-3731. Want to play? Know the rules. This message provided by the NCAA. We are at halftime, 28-3. Florida State leading over Georgia Tech. And Mike Gottfried, we talked off the top of the telecast. And George O'Leary said, you know, you can, you can stop Florida State to a bit, but you've got to cut out the big plays. They didn't in the second quarter. Did the Avalanche came in on them. No, big plays just exploded on them. Starting with this one, Lamont... Green's interception, takes it in for the touchdown, and everything after this just went downhill. Warwick Dunn is going to break away, got good blocking on this play, broke in the secondary, tried to tackle him high. Peter Bolwer, second from the left at the top, is going to come in, block the kick, recover for a touchdown. Then Andre Cooper, late in the second quarter, wide open in the corner, throws the ball up from Thad Busby for the touchdown, and four big plays have turned this football game around. Mike, you remember the analogy that uh, Bobby Bowden used last week talking about uh, getting your team going in the offense and everything? He said it's kind of like opening a jar of olives. Really hard to get that first olive out. And once you do, they just all come out of there so easy. But same theory tonight. He got that first olive out, and that was the downfall of Georgia Tech. Half the jar is empty now. <laughs> Rodgers, three yards deep, he will not return it. So let's see if it's going to be Joey Hamilton who will come out to operate the attack in the second half, or if it, it will be Brandon Shaw. And it appears as though it's going to be number 10, Shaw, who will come back out to run the offense. Ron, Joel Hamilton came into this ball game with an injured knee, so maybe he hurt that knee in the first half. That's the only thing I can figure. Uh, unless they just are unhappy with his play in the first half. And Joe Hamilton's uh, their quarterback of the future, so I doubt that that's the reason. Brandon Shaw, as we mentioned, the sophomore redshirt out of Marietta. And this is Curtis Holloman. One of the things when you run a play that does not develop quickly and uh, try to get outside, that speed will be there to catch you. That time Vernon Crawford, a senior out of Texas City, Texas, He's really one of the emotional leaders on the defense. Got outside to hit him. If you're George O'Leary, what'd you say at halftime, Mike? Well, you just want your team to compete. That's that's what you expect out of them. They made a lot of big mistakes, big plays, but you expect them to come out in the second half and make a game of this. Myers with the block inside. C.J. Williams spins off, but he can't get away from Henry Crockett. One of the better defensive teams I've seen. Uh, Wadsworth is down, Mike. He was hurt after the Miami game. He hurt his knee and didn't practice until Wednesday of the Virginia game. And you were talking about earlier, Ron, that when you get to the stage, and Mickey Andrews talked about this, when you get people nicked uh, and they miss practice, what they miss in practice is the fundamentals. And then all of a sudden you get a little sloppy on Saturday. And if you miss a lot of practices, you get sloppier. And that's what happens when you get guys hurt in football. Can't constantly work on the same things if they're not on the field fundamentally. Andre Wadsworth, as Mike had mentioned, has been a mainstay on the, on the defensive front. He was a walk-on, but primarily the reason for that, uh, he's a junior out of Miami. He was injured, had a knee injury in high school, and some people didn't know if they wanted to take a chance on him or not. And he really worked his way back in. And now, uh, boy, not just a walk-on, he's been a force. Bobby Bowden, I'm sure, is uh, concerned about this. We're going to go away for a moment. We'll take a break. Right back with more from Atlanta. Would a man attack the peak of K2 if a remarkably soft pair of pants were placed there? Would a man tread the lip of a volcano for pants that were pure cotton yet wrinkle-free? Would a man brave the trackless Sahara for pants that were suitable for work and play? A man would, if he were a fool, because he could go to the store and say, yes, I'd like to try on the ultimate pant, new by Hager. Besides, your wife won't let you go to the Sahara anyway. What if your car slips off the road in Slippery Rock? Or you need the name of a mechanic in Mechanicsville? Well, if your car is insured by State Farm, just look up the local State Farm agent. Almost anywhere you travel, whether it's a big metropolis, 
or just a little one. A good neighbor is always nearby to help. So if your car gets stolen in Thief River Falls, or you have some trouble in paradise, hey, don't worry about it. State Farm is there. Plymouth Neon. ESPN's coverage of Saturday Primetime is brought to you by Plymouth. One clever idea after another. That's Plymouth. Well, a couple of reports to give you. First of all, Joe Hamilton is fine. The reason for using Shaw, they just want to use him in another sequence here. We have not found out about the injury to Wadsworth as yet. They just have taken him to the sideline. We'll update you momentarily. This time, Curtis McGee. You can see, flinched, came out of a stance, and it'll uh, cost him five. Go. Full start on the offense. Five yards. Third down. And let's go to Mike Tirico. What do you have for us, Mike? Ron, we have this McDonald's breakaway. Takes us over to the deuce and down to Jordan Hare, where Rusty Williams is really taking over as the Auburn back. Score from 15 yards earlier, now four yards out. Auburn leads Arkansas by 14. They'll be watching you guys with great interest next Saturday night. Yeah, I, uh, I know they will. Getting a little daylight there. 14-point lead in front of 85,000. And they may be pulling for Alabama. It could be. You're right. Secretly, though, yeah. Mike. They've got to pull <laughs> outwardly. Brandon Shaw on the keep. Close to the 20-yard line. That's Henry Crockett who is holding on to him along with Daryl Bush. So it's going to bring up Williams into the lineup. And let's take a close look in case you missed the first half. Peter Bull there with a blocked punt. And he came from the left side, the Florida State left side. And he knocked it into the end zone. And it was recovered by Shevin Smith for the touchdown. And the Knowles are coming after him again. But he gets this one away nicely. Fair catch is called for and made that he dropped the ball. That's Dee Feaster. And they're going to put the ball down at the 33-yard line. But the Deuce has the best in college football. Next Saturday at 12.30, number nine, Michigan. And Jared Irons look to sack Purdue. Then at 7 o'clock, Virginia Tech takes on the Pirates of East Carolina. And we're not done at 10. Utah and their high-flying offense goes up against New Mexico. All next Saturday on the Deuce. Warwick Dunn. First half for him. 63 yards on eight carries. Second half. Makes one miss. Makes two miss. Not anything that's going to turn any heads, but instead of negative yardage, he winds up with about three as Rodgers, along with Nathan Perryman, stop it. Well, when you look at Warwick Dunn's numbers, uh, you have to look. at Tonight, he's averaging 7.2 yards per carry. But you made an interesting point this morning that when you look in big games against Virginia, he had 26 carries for 131 yards versus Miami, 22 carries for 163 yards. He seems to step up, and they give him the ball in the big ball games. Almost broke this one big. You can see hanging on for dear life is Patrick Bradford. And Mike made the point back in the first half. If you get a stop done, you got to hit him low. He is much stronger than he would appear. Although he's not big in stature, he is very strong in the upper body. If you hit him chest high down, he'll either spin on you or keep driving. Yeah, he signed as a defensive back out of high school. He was a quarterback in, uh, on his high school team on offense. Threw for 700 yards. Gets the pitch, blocker in front, and he's going to have the first down. Puts a hit gear across the 45 and to the 47. Keith Booking and Ron Rogers stop in. You made the statement about what Bobby Bowden said. He's a patient individual. He could have come out, could have made a lot of money in pro football this year, but he said his education meant a lot to him, and he said, I've been poor for 21 years. What's one more? One more year's not going to make any difference. That's right. But he set an example. Yeah, he set an example for his family, and he set an example for Florida State. 
straight ahead with the fullback. He'll take it across the 50. That's Pooh Bear Williams and Kellen Winslow. You have more to add down on the sideline. Well, we all know the story about Ward Dunn's mother being killed a couple of years ago in Baton Rouge and how that affected him and his family. But he's always been like the leader of his family. He stayed in school, had a good example, wanted his brothers and sisters to know the importance of education. But when you talk about a, a great young man, we've met some nice young people this year during uh, college football, but Ward Dunn is in a class by himself. Well, I, I agree with that. I was looking at my notes here. Is carry the ball again he's going to be stopped after a gain of one jimmy clements wraps him up i have put a big asterisk asterisk by i was looking at notes in the head right here mike and i remember he said i always go to church no matter how tired i am because i got so much to be thankful for he's what's right about college athletics and college football he is a tremendous example and a tremendous uh, representative uh, I'm sure Dave Hart, the athletic director, and Bobby Bowden, the football coach, uh, are very proud of Ward Dunn. Busby going to go on top. Looking deep and intercepted by Wilkins. It's his third of the night. And he might have injured himself after the interception. I played that perfectly, O'Ron. He was back in center field. They're trying to go to Andre Cooper deep down the field again. And Thad Busby just overthrew uh, Andre Cooper, but didn't overthrow Brian Wilkins for another interception. By the way, now the word from upstairs is Hamilton does have an injury. They say his right elbow. Well, I'm surprised that he has not come out here in the second half, though, because he gives them a better chance to win. Not that he's uh, any better, but when you're the first-team quarterback, you're the first-team quarterback for a reason. And I think he just gives you a better opportunity. He's more mobile, and you can do a lot of things with Joe Hamilton, and he's had a lot of success this year. Brandon Shaw, uh, we talked about him. He played very well last week uh, against Central Florida. His father's a former assistant football coach at Florida State in Tennessee, and he coached Reggie White at Tennessee. Straight ahead with the carry, and little Charlie Rogers almost burst out of the back of that. This, see Daryl Bush holding on there, trying not to run over the uh, the umpire. This defense just makes you work for yardage. You're always working, and when us. At halftime, you think of Florida State, they're like a full-court pressing basketball team. They're just on you in special teams all the time. They're on you on defense, and on offense, they're no huddle on you. So they're the pace of the game. They make you play their pace. He's a pickup block. The pass complete to Rogers. Darrell Bush going to wrap him up, number 44. That was thrown very well by Brandon Shaw. It really was. And good pressure from the outside. He didn't really have a throwing lane. Found the throwing lane and threw the ball out to Charlie Rogers. Just stands tall in the pocket. He's six foot three and just good release out to Charlie Rogers for the completion. There you see Bush coming into the picture, making the tackle. running play nothing whoa he got tagged Gerald Bush posted him Crawford then came in to help but he went down hard that first down just a moment ago is the first in over 15 minutes you have to go back to the 12 23 mark of the second quarter since uh, Georgia Tech recorded the first down That's they got to hold on to the football team. yeah you, know, you, off the field. You, you can't have three and outs. Uh, they, that was about the time when that interception yeah uh, Lamont Green everything uh, after that uh, was a disaster but they need to keep the balls. You're right, Ron. But they need to make some big plays themselves. It's tough to work against this field when you go this defense when you're going three, four, five, six yards. Myers in motion. Shaw rolls the pocket and just throws this one away. Grant Bainham was the closest man to it, the tight end. Toughest throw for a quarterback when you're a right-handed quarterback. You've got to get square to the line of scrimmage. But he was having pressure from the inside. You see what happened with Bulware? He yeah, got his arm lodged in between his shoulder pad and his headgear. Peter Bulware is just going to continually pressure Brandon Shaw the outside, never give him a chance to get his shoulder square up the field. Yeah. I think they got their headgears hooked up. I'll tell you what, Mike, 
That could have been a penalty after one step. That's that's a no-no zone. Now that was a pillow fight there. That wasn't a real hit. Brad and Shaw might disagree with you. <laughs> Pressure. Delivers it, got it complete. Middleton across the 40. Shevin Smith will make the tackle, and that'll be enough for the first down. I credit Brandon Shaw here because he steps into the pocket and faces up. Renard Wilson's coming from the outside. Now here's Harvey Middleton on the route. Just goes down, plant, now breaks across the middle. But what made this play is he kept going. Now he stops. Now he comes back to the quarterback. Found a little open zone because Brandon Shaw was being chased. I like Harvey Middleton. He's a good, solid receiver. Quality. There's a basketball player. Didn't play football until he was a junior in high school. going to be a game of about a half yard. Vernon Crawford leading the attack. And when we were talking to Harvey Middleton yesterday after practice, I asked him, I said, did Joe Hamilton come here because of you? And he said, yeah, I got him here because he committed to Nebraska. Joe Hamilton was an option-type quarterback that Nebraska felt could be a player for them, but Harvey Middleton just didn't let up and uh, got him talked into coming to Georgia Tech. I just want to let someone know they've turned the heat off in the booth, and it's drawing a lot of attention. Rogers to the right side, runs into his own blocker. That was Page who was trying to help him out. Then he gets shoved back. Rogers gets up and looks at the official and, and says, hey, blow that whistle. Kellen, let's check in with you. Well, Ron and Mike, we did get an update on Hamilton. He does have an elbow injury. They didn't tell if it, if it was a bruise or a dislocation. They checked it out at halftime. He is out for the rest of the ball game, though. Okay, Kellen, uh, that's that's the word that we had gotten up here as well. So, and as Mike said, he was surprised when Hamilton didn't go in there and uh, had to think he looked for an injury of some kind. For Brandon Shaw again, he makes a big league play with Peter Bowler right in his face again. Play action pass where he fakes the football and then comes out to his left side, but he was able to get his feet up under him. Here's Peter Bowler with that outside pass rush. Now he comes under control because he knows it's a boot, but Brandon Shaw was able to get his feet shuffled around, get him up under him and make the completion with a good strong throw to the outside of Curtis Hallman. That was big league play by Brandon Shaw. He's been impressive, Ron. I, I've been impressed with the last couple plays of throwing the football. Has a stronger arm than Hamilton, and I think the impressive thing tonight has been he has more mobility than you might think for a 6'3 kid. Well, he's got 6'3", that 6'3 uh, size, and he's able to step up in the pocket. Ninth play of the drive for uh, Georgia Tech. Rogers right up the middle for the ticket to the 45. Henry Crockett making the stop, and I mentioned the war of words, and uh, these guys are not giving up from Georgia Tech, that's for sure. Well, Craig Page just had a great block. Uh, I don't know who the... I think it was Bush. Bush. Bush, I mean, he just took him right to the ground, but it uh, he stayed in contact with him a long time. You hear applause. The heat has come back on in the booth. The blood has turned out, huh? <laughs> Curtis Holloman made a couple, then got wrecked pretty hard. Daryl Bush is down at the bottom of that stack. Well, tune in this Thursday at 7.30 for the weekend kickoff show. It cuts all the news, insights, and predictions. Then at 8 o'clock, the 17th-ranked Wyoming Cowboys make their national television debut on ESPN as they take on San Diego State. for Joe Tilly. He's, He's a having a, a, of a very nice good year, and yep. he better buckle it up next Play. week because San Diego State's pretty good, but Ted Toner and a pretty you good bet. football team.
That'll be a huge test. They also have Colorado State on the road. Just as he got it away, complete, this is Sheridan. And he fell down inside the 20. Ron, there's the third straight play that Brandon Shaw has made. He got hit and leveled when he threw the football by Vernon Crawford, number 47. But he stood in there again and makes his play. Watch number 10. Brandon Shaw set up. Here's 47. Vernon Crawford hits him as he throws the football to Mike Sheridan. Big completion. Timeout, Florida State. Here's the route. Mike Sheridan, number 17, on the little drag, little shallow cross. Kevin Smith missing a tackle. So we'll take a break. 28 to 3, Florida State. And Tech is threatening. With its second sliding door, easy out roller seats, plus air conditioning and seven passenger seating, all for a great price. The Plymouth Voyager is pretty attractive. Sears is filled to capacity with tires for whatever you drive. And right now, all Goodyear tires are on sale at the lowest prices of the season. Only at our garage, the Sears Auto Center. McDonald's new crispy chicken deluxe with an all-white meat breast filet, fresh lettuce, and tomato on a bakery soft roll. It's a grown-up reminder that you're never too old to drool. It's McDonald's with a grown-up taste. If you're going on a business trip, there's one thing you shouldn't forget. To rent a car from Dollar. Because Dollar awards American Airlines Advantage miles. And when you rent on a Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, you'll get double miles on American, America West, Continental, TWA, or United. So you can go someplace where you can forget everything that has anything to do with business. Double frequent flyer miles. Just one more reason Dollar makes sense. National Powerhouse Michigan travels to Lafayette for a Big Ten battle with Purdue. Next Saturday at 12.30, only on ESPN2. 28-3, our score, Florida State. Georgia Tech is threatening. Coming up later in the game, we'll be selecting the Visa players of the game. Just got a report that Andre Wadsworth has a burner in the neck. And so he's not going to return. Good look at Reynard Wilson. Bo Ware on the other side. Boy, there are a lot of pro scouts here tonight. With the accessibility of Atlanta to the rest of the world, probably one of the reasons to look at these two. Look at time of possession and plays. And only three points. Mm -hmm. What a stick on Curtis Hoffman. He got whacked as he cut back into the line. And Vernon Crawford, who in this sequence has made about four tackles. He really has. And this is the, the type of play right now that Georgia Tech has to make if they're going to get back in this football game. They were not able in the first half to get seven points on the board. Had to settle for three field goal attempts. They need to punch this ball in for a score here. Georgia Larry, the second year at Georgia Tech. Looking on as we're about to go into four minutes to play third quarter. His club is down by 25. Opening for Holloman. Flag did come down, and that's going to be a late hit, I believe. It might be a holding run. Well, it is holding. going to be a holding. On the offense. And it looked for the world as though there was a late hit, didn't it? Yes. Still second down. Cannell Spain is down now. Watchworth out a moment ago. Now the other defensive tackle. Can't afford to lose Andre Wadsworth and Connell Spain, although the backups, Julian Pittman and Jerry Johnson, have played quite a bit. Vernon Crawford, we mentioned, one of the emotional leaders of this defense. Sean Key, number 16, comes into the huddle. So we're going to take a break. 3.59 left in the third. Florida State 28 to 3. 
Big Ten Tires asks, where do you see yourself down the road? No, literally down the road. Better start out with Kelly Tires. We have top quality, high mileage Kelly Tires for just about every kind of car, light truck, pickup or van, and every kind of driver. So if you see yourself here, here, or here, well, maybe not there. We'll see you here at Big Ten Tires, where you'll always get a good deal on a great Kelly Tire. Cars carry precious cargo. That's why trusting your car to an auto repair shop is an important decision. It's nice to know that Furran Auto and the Professional Automotive Center make that decision easy. We care about your safety and provide a 30-point maintenance check for all foreign makes and models. Our highly trained technicians will repair your car quickly and dependably. Furran Auto and Professional Automotive Center, 20 years of proven service. And remember, when you trust your car to us, the benefits ride with you. It's a live entertainment. You get dinner theater, that performance art hippie crap. And NC2A basketball on ESPN. College basketball on ESPN. College basketball on ESPN. All the excitement of Vegas, but without some bellhop bugging you for a tip. NC2A basketball on ESPN. Every game counts. Capiche? Every game counts. 28 to 3 and looking at that promo I know you're excited about college basketball coming on I am as well but Jarris looked much more at home in the party situation there than Mike Krzyzewski did the <laughs> dribbling those basketballs all over the country yeah there are a lot of football coaches that are half a day yard too <laughs> it's called a changing the focus clock is running 355 and counting that's in the third quarter. Craig Page out over the football. Harvey Middleton's been the experienced receiver. Second and 16. Here comes the pressure. Shaw. He's just going to throw this one away. And the flag is down. Back well behind the line of scrimmage. Lamont Green with the pressure. Well, Lamont Green and Renard Wilson hit Brandon Shaw, just as he delivered the football. You know, about everything's going wrong for Georgia Tech now. Renard Wilson, his first step, now remember, he's about 265, and he bench presses 500, over 500 pounds, being held, and still gets in to make the hit on Brandon Shaw. No run, you talked about all the pro scouts here. A lot of eyes on 55 there. That's what Renard I mean. Wilson. Looking, yeah, he, uh, looking at Wilson, they don't know if Bull Ware is going to stick around. There's a premier for pass rush guys, and uh, Renard Wilson does it as well as anybody in the country in college football. Yep, uh, a lot of folks in here watching. I think Gooba's the one that uh, they were pointing the finger at, as you could see that uh, the replay. Matt Gubba he said when they played North Carolina State that the band kept calling him Gubba. So they said in unison, hey Gubba, where's Forrest? <laughs> Swings the pass, Rogers. Got an opening. Gets by Bush. No, won't get by Daryl Bush. Nice job defensively by the youngster out of Altamont Springs, and he throws him out of bounds around the 33. They're taking uh, a lot of hits on Brandon Shaw right here, the backup quarterback. He's getting hit a lot after he throws the football. Here's a play-action pass. Julian Pittman, the backup for Andre Wadsworth with the hit. Peter Bowler also hitting him, and that's how you try to take advantage of those hard-charging defensive ends is try to get that ball in that little flare pass to Rodgers. Breaks will attempt this field goal of 51 yards. This is into the breeze. Well, it was true, but he used a nine iron and should have used about a seven. Well, let's go down to the sideline. Kevin Winslow in another injury update. 
Oh, Mike and Ron, if I'd known if we'd known this many injury updates, I would have gone to medical school instead of law school. But Canel Spain, number 96, is out with a sprained left knee. His medial collateral ligament is sprained. They're going to evaluate him after the game to see just how severe. And that's a big blow to Florida State because Wadsworth, their other defensive tackle, is already out with what was uh, first classified as a burner and has been upgraded to a cervical sprain. Ron, the, the problem that uh, that gives you is that your Florida State defense is based on the premise of taking those two ends up the field and forcing that quarterback up in the pocket. And when you got a guy like Wadsworth in Spain moving the pocket up inside, there's no place for a quarterback to go. They, so it's not just the two ends that make this defense. It's the four of those defensive linemen together. and uh, The to push lose, that they get. Yeah, to lose both of those tackles tonight in this ball game, uh, I'm sure Bobby Bowden is concerned about this 28-3 lead a little bit, but there's more concern about those two defensive tackles. Under three minutes to play, third quarter. Florida State by 25. Busby on second down, wins it, has it complete. That's Peter Warwick across the 45. Good for the first down, and Nathan Perryman puts a stopper on him. Ronnie Cottrell, who heads up the recruiting for Florida State, when I talked to him a couple weeks ago, was talking about Peter Warwick. He said he's our next great receiver. He's a young guy, he's a freshman, 6'1", 190, but has so much speed and talent. They just keep the two receivers in linebackers, in defensive backs, in running backs. I mean, they just, they have more depth than any team I've seen in the country. Hubert puts the head down. Mike D to the inauspicious task of coming up to tackle all 287 pounds of Hubert Williams. And when you talk about Florida State, the difference in the ACC is that like Virginia. Virginia played them tough. North Carolina played them tough. But they, they have more depth than those teams to have right now. But they're catching them. They're bringing, Florida State's bringing the level of the ACC up to them. Well, one of the things we can always tell, Mike, when we go in on Thursdays to see practice, the uh, the squads that they their first teams work out against are better than most teams. Oh, they get a great look, and that's big in college football because you get a much better look in practice. Down is loose. Goodbye. Chalk it up. Touchdown. We're done. 45 yards. Ron, it's, I said this last week, and uh, I'll say it again. I can't believe somebody told me his name's not on the list to visit the uh, the Heisman Trophy in New York. Somebody needs to put his name on that list. We talk about those pro scouts looking at Renard Wilson. They're also looking at uh, 28. Perfect. 138 to play, third quarter. New score, Florida State 35 to 3. Well, you just wear a defense down eventually. Now you give the ball to Warwick Dunn and he makes those little moves. You know, when you have speed straight ahead, but he's got lateral speed that when he makes those cuts, he doesn't lose any speed and he just breaks in the secondary for the touchdown. Great running backs run in the country. He's my choice right there. The best running back in the country. I know you like Hansbard a little bit from uh, Texas Tech Spike Steen. Yep, I do. I just think that Hansbard needs to get more attention than he has. You look at the numbers. Davis of Iowa State, 1,594 yards. Of course, that youngster over 2,000 last year. Hansbard hated headed for that same destination at 1611 right now and Warwick Dunn 123 carry 762 yards but he got off to a slower start because they were focusing on that quarterback position I think. Well you look at this team old Troy Davis and Hans are the offenses for both their teams. Warwick Dunn is surrounded by a lot of gifted athletes receivers like Cooper and E.G. Green a quarterback like Thad Busby and they also bring in a, a backup tailback at Rock Preston but you look at his yardage, he's in attempts and only half as much attempts, almost half as much as the other backs. But I, I don't think that if I start the football team, you can give me one running back college football, I'd take him. Rogers, five yards deep, won't return. And here's a look at the run, this time from ground level. Bostic tries to arm tackle, misses the ankle, and, uh, and it's history. You know, he looks as though the gate... He's very smooth, but he doesn't look as though he's moving that quickly. And all of a sudden, he's gone with the secondary. 
And as Mike said earlier, probably the most impressive thing about him, you look at the big showdown games, uh, like earlier this year, Miami, a huge run, broke that one wide open. Virginia, 65 yards, he broke that one wide open. His freshman year, down at Florida, broke it open. I only have one question. Who beat him out in high school for that running back position to made him be a quarterback? <laughs> James the pass incomplete. Middleton is the guy that he was looking for. That'll stop the clock at 134. Brandon Shaw getting some very valuable experience here tonight. As he's getting to look at one of the best defenses he'll see for the entire time he plays yeah, in Georgia he, Tech. He, he's not going to see a better defense than this this year. Now, there's some good defenses in this league. you got to put Virginia up as one of the best defenses in the country and North Carolina. Carolina as well. That's three great defenses in this conference. And Clemson's not bad. Now let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Oh, Ron, let's uh, update everyone on the game over on the deuce. Auburn and Damian Craig, and this is when he can be so tough. Lose what would have been a sack for most quarterbacks on the run to Tyrone Goodson. Great touchdown, 26 yards, carries Tigers by 21. Well, it looks like that Auburn coaching staff did some stern talking on the sideline and some adjustments. They just scored 28 unanswered points against the Hogs. a minute to play in this third quarter. Reynard Wilson. Bush with a lot of pressure. Pass overthrown and it's Middleton that he was looking for. Just have everything covered, Ron. When you sprint your quarterback out, Daryl Bush is blitzing. Uh, to try to get a little pressure on Brandon Shaw. The coverage is good in the secondary and uh, just a complete defensive effort tonight for Florida State. See Chuck Amato there on the sideline. He's the linebacker's coach. He's got to be very pleased so with the Lamont Green with the pickoff and the touchdown. Here's Williams' kick. This is uh, not a good one. Into the win. This one dies. That's going to go out of bounds short of the 50-yard line. Only a 23-yard boot. Florida State takes it over in good field position. And, Ron, when you talk Heisman Trophy, of course, you talk about running backs, but you also have to talk about the quarterback position, and there are three pretty solid uh, quarterbacks out there now. And, of course, Werfel, it goes without saying, he is about to set a record as far as the points and fa passing proficiency in the NCAA. Of course, you got Manning, and you got Plummer out at Arizona State. Ron, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to uh, give you my belief that Peyton Manning will come back next year. And uh, I think he'll play another year at Tennessee, even if he wins the Heisman Trophy. Tennessee quarterback, and he sprints to the left, gets his pass away. Ball comes out. Now it depends on if they're going to say, did he catch it or was it incomplete? Coles. He coughed it up, and they say incomplete. And I know you've talked to uh, Archie Manning, and I've talked to him also, but uh, and he didn't say anything like that. I just have a firm belief that Peyton Manning will be back next year in college football. We hope so. I'm not sure I uh, share those. That's all right. Those don't, don't jump on the fence with me there. Don't but worry. I, I mean, I'm on the <laughs> limb there, but I, I think he'll be back. Second down and 10. Oh, what a hit at the line of scrimmage by Brookie. Keith Brookie on D. Feaster, and let's check in with Kellett. Kellett? Mike, I'm going to go out on the limb with you about that Peyton Manning prediction. Hey, he thanks, will be back Kellen. in Tennessee next year. You know, the young man just seems to be enjoying himself. We spent some time with him in the games we've done in Tennessee. I met Peyton last year. A very good friend of mine coaches at Tennessee, Kevin Ramsey, defensive back coach. They love him there. He's having a great time in college. And you know, there's really no financial reason for him to come out. I think he'll stay. No, it's not going to be a crowded limo, Kellen. Just be you and I. That's the end of the third quarter. Florida State, big. I promised you a demon drencher, and you'll get a demon drencher, even if we have to drive to Alaska. Sorry. We're all out. Hey, a promise is a promise. Kelly Springfield tires are designed to go a long way. 
And we've got the warranties to prove it. Hi. We're heading home. So go. Quite a trip, huh, pal? Get every mile you can out of life. The best way to introduce the new Plymouth Breeze is by applying the lessons you learned in kindergarten. Take turns. Share with others. Follow the rules of safety. And oh yeah, get something really cool to bring to show and tell. The new Plymouth Breeze. Would a man attack the peak of K2 if a remarkably soft pair of pants were placed there? Would a man tread the lip of a volcano for pants that were pure cotton yet wrinkle-free? Would a man brave the trackless Sahara for pants that were suitable for work and play? A man would, if he were a fool, because he could go to the store and say, yes, I'd like to try on the ultimate pant, new by Hager. Besides, your wife won't let you go to the Sahara anyway. Sears is filled to capacity with tires for whatever you drive. And right now, all Goodyear tires are on sale at the lowest prices of the season. Only at our garage. The Sears Auto Center. Now, with 50% more tender filet than before, McDonald's new fish filet deluxe is sure to satisfy your grown-up needs and desires. Uh, for lunch. It's McDonald's with a grown-up taste. This morning, strange things are happening all over the world. Shops are about to open empty. Parts suppliers are partless. And assembly workers have nothing to assemble. Is this any way to run a business? With FedEx it is. Every morning the world gets just what it wants, just when it needs it. Without expensive warehousing. Gone today, here again tomorrow. Now that's the way the world works. 35 to 3 Florida State as we head into the fourth period. Kendra has come in at quarterback. And you see uh, number 96, Cadell Spain, being helped off the field. And you see the binding, uh, the ice pack on his left knee. So Spain injured tonight. Wadsworth injured tonight. Both of the starting defensive tackles for Florida State. Flushed out of the pocket. 35 Brooking along with Mike D combining on the stop. And as we discussed in the game against Clemson, when he runs, those defensive backs need to keep in mind now it's not a quarterback running. With 238 pounds, he's no joy to tackle. No, and his favorite player when he was uh, looking at the pros was Lawrence Taylor. So it tells you a little bit about his mentality. He didn't yeah. have a quarterback as his favorite player. Yes, yeah, just wondering he didn't hit himself yeah. then. <laughs> See Lawrence in the Oh, I got you. I got you. Passed over him. Uh, I got it second time. Quarterback sneak. And Kendra will pick up the first down. Mike Tirico, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, final minute and change at the Rose Bowl. Stanford and UCLA. It's Chad Hutchinson down six to the end zone for Brian Manning. They kick the extra point. In the final minute, Stanford leads UCLA by one. That'd be their first conference win, wouldn't it? I think so. 35 to 3, our score as you're looking to the guys of number 44, Darrell Bush. UCLA has played a very difficult schedule and started with Tennessee. And he fumbles that snap. Derek Shepard said, whoop, that's it. End of the way. Flag comes down at the 39 as he did not get back to the line of scrimmage. And he was not looking to throw the football after. He was just going to try to make whatever he could make on the play. Well, we got more football coming up next. The Falcons of Air Force host the Colorado State Rams. Bo Morgan and his mates hope to continue their winning ways with more option offense. That's following our game. So holding against uh, Florida State, and I believe that's the first holding call since back in the first quarter when they had three. And they, they were hit with three right away in the yeah, first quarter. They really uh, were. 
lost a field position battle early. Interesting seeing Coach Bowden put those headsets on. Uh, I got a thought on that as soon as the play is over here. off the mark and that one. You know, Mark Rick, the offense coordinator, now calls the plays. Bobby had called him forever and ever. And he said, you know, yeah, I was kind of getting back on the headset and I was kind of messing him up, not letting him get his job done. So he said, Clemson, Miami, and Virginia, that uh, he has not done anything as far as calling the plays. And he said, as a result, as you look at Mark over there on the right-hand side of your uh, picture, uh, he said, it's been a lot more continuity since I've stayed away. <laughs> Ron, that was a nice arrow. Uh, but Bobby Bond said he's a cheerleader now. He's going to lose a yard. Yeah, that arrow looked like the ones that the Seminoles were firing in the first quarter. Yeah. Duds in yeah. the ground. This is good time for Dan Kendra, the backup quarterback. Get a little work. There was a time uh, during the first part of the season where we had the North Carolina State game on Thursday, and Dan Kendrick came in and played very well. And then when we went down there at Clemson, he was pushing Thad Busby. He was, uh, there was a time when they thought maybe he was going to overtake Thad Busby, but then Thad Busby just took off. Trey Thomas is in with left tackle. 6'8", 330. Look at him there on the left side, number 7. Kendrick's going to go down. Stimson gets the sack, number 56, for the West Palm Beach, Florida. And now the game's getting really sloppy for Florida State offensively. Sean Bliss will put it away. What a pick up the first. They had to go all the way back down to the 26-yard line of Georgia Tech. So this drive went backwards. Their catch is called for by Perryman and is made. Th 38 yards in the puddle. Let's take a timeout. 11.57 left in the ball game. All for the state. The legendary chalice of Malta has never come cheap. In 1238, it was captured by 10,000 Celts. In 1512, it took an entire armada. And in 1703, it took an arranged marriage to the daughter of Charles V the older one but luckily if you want the golden chalice of malta all you need is the golden card of visa with extraordinary purchase power for extraordinary things it's even mightier than the sword visa gold fits everywhere you want to be how'd you do on the math test oh, what happened i tripped over this where do you think it goes that way it was fun Oops. Can you confirm a signal loss? Houston, we have a problem. Roger. Must be a couple of gremlins down here. It's not TV. It's HBO. In the game of politics, choosing a candidate can be a difficult move. That's because candidates make lots of promises. Promises, promises, promises. So, who will you choose? Her. Good choice, because she has an ice-cold Miller Lite, which makes only one promise. Great taste. Join the party. Choose Miller Lite. Life is good. And when you vote, life is really good. 35-3, to three, Florida State leads. And as Mike said, a lot of substitutions, and uh, play got a little sloppy on that, uh, on that last sequence. I want to correct one thing I said earlier, that, that this would be Stanford's first conference win. It would not. They beat Oregon 27-24. Pump once. Shaw on top. Got him out there and just overthrown Middleton, the man that he was looking for. Let's bring in an old friend, Vino Cook, to talk a little bit about the Heisman race. Vino, uh, Welcome. Thank you very much. Heisman race, I know you get a vote. Uh, who would be your man right now? Well, Danny Werfel from Florida. Uh, I, I think it's his to lose. Uh, and I think unless uh, he does what Mike Phipps did in 1969, Mike Phipps of Purdue was the winner. 
until he threw six interceptions against Ohio State in November, and Steve Owens won it. I, unless Danny has a terrible, terrible game against Florida State, he, I think he will win it. Even Bino, if Florida State goes down and beats Florida, and Warwick Dunn rushes for over 150 yards, you don't think that there's any chance that the Warwick Dunn will overcome Danny Werfel because that's my scenario and I'm sticking to it. Well, you might be right. I don't. I, I mean, I don't think that if Warwick Dunn would then get the Heisman Trophy. I would think if Plummer would have a better chance than Dunn if Arizona State went all the way. Uh, I basically think it's uh, a two-man race between Danny and, and, and Plummer with Orlando Pace finishing in the top three. I think a lot of people will vote him number two and three. I think he has a good chance to finish in the top three. I don't think he will win it, but I think if people will want to cleanse themselves, all the members of the media, and they will vote for Pace in the top three. Well, we're gonna have more from Bino. We'll take a break. Back with more. Processor. Packard Bell. Wouldn't you rather be at home? He said, what? I'll be there for 10 minutes max. Do not start without me. Hold on, you're going to get us killed. You're driving like a bat out of Hades. Traveling's an adventure. Where you stay, shouldn't be. Fairfield Inn by Marriott. Wyoming puts its unbeaten streak on the line against the Aztecs. Wyoming, San Diego State, Thursday at 8, only on ESPN. Danny Werfel, the topic of conversation with Ron, Mike, and Bino today. Werfel threw for 279 yards and four touchdowns. Here's one of them. Florida won by 40. With today's play, Werfel's quarterback rating, 185. That's ahead of Steve Sarkeesian at BYU. Ron? Okay, Mike. Our situation, uh, we have 11.46 to play in our football game. 35-3, to Florida State leading over Georgia Tech. You know what? We got a little stoppage uh, in play here. What about Orlando Pace? Can you give it to an offensive lineman? Well, you can, but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I've said this before. Uh, you're, not, you, you, you're never going to have somebody from Montana become president, and you're never going to have an offensive lineman win the Heisman Trophy. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I've, read a, I've read a column uh, by Associated Press this week, of, uh, and... A survey was kind of taken, and, and, and Pace is he's very difficult for him to win. That doesn't mean he should not win it. I just don't think he will. Pass too long and incomplete. Bino, we thank you so much for uh, your time. It's good to talk to you, my friend. It's been a long time, but we yes. appreciate you coming on tonight, okay? Thank you very much for having me on. All righty. Bino Cook from up in Pittsburgh tonight. And we're going to po contemplate his uh, his scenario about the president from Montana for a while. Well, the people of Montana thank him, too. So, punt formation. Rodney Williams back for Georgia Tech. Why do you think that is, man? The snow's out there too much or what? Lack of population, I guess. Uh, going to be down to the 45. 32-yard punt. Well, catch the NFL countdown tomorrow as Boomer and the boys start your day off right. 
the Dallas Cowboy defense getting it done without a lot of big names. And the Redskins, hey, a perfect 21 of 21 in the red zone. They'll tell you why. And who will catch for the Packers? Who will they throw it to tomorrow on NFL Countdown? It's a chance for Dan Kinder again to get something going on offense. To reverse, Peter Warwick. Warwick still on his feet. Warwick's going to come back the other way. He reverses a reverse, and this one's looking well. Steps out of bounds. Okay, we're on Dan Kendra. Really worked up the field and made a block. Now, he was back in his element on this play. He got a chance to hit somebody. And I'll tell you, Kevin Long, the offensive center for... The Seminoles is injured. He is up, but they come out to help him off, and he is favoring his right leg, his right knee. Now, that's three starters that have gotten injured for Florida State. Bobby Bond just soon get this game over with. Put that thing on fast yeah. forward. You're right. Get it over with and get out of here. We're getting too many people hurt. Well, Dan Kendro really worked hard on this last play. Reversed uh, Peter Warwick, and it worked all the way back to him. Now, look at him. Number 10. 6'2", 250, getting a chance to deliver a blow. 238. Number 10, shows his speed, too. Getting ahead of Warwick right here, and then trying to get a lick on Nathan Perriman. So Kevin Long is being helped off the field now. We'll try to get Kevin over there by him to uh, get a report and see the extent of that injury. That means that Eric Thomas... A freshman from Miami comes in at center, number 57. They go to Preston. Throws it complete, Warwick at the five. Touchdown, Florida State. What a second effort by Peter Warwick. Well, he said he may be the next great receiver, and he's showing you why. Good play fake by Dan Kendra, which held the linebackers. Bent with the extra point, it's good. Peter Warwick is going to work down the field and across, and a good play fake by Dan Kendra right here, which will hold the linebackers. There's the play fake. Now Warwick's in the middle of the field. Linebackers can't catch up to him. Makes a good catch on a high throw and then works his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, he really did go high for that ball. It was almost over his head. And you could see Wilkins trying to hold on to it. Freshman out of Bradenton. Two plays, 55 yards in 24 seconds. And that really helps Florida State cause because Dan Kendra gets a little confidence from that play. You know, every time uh, we have seen Kendra when he's been able to play, just like he's doing on the sideline there, Spider, he, he has a lot of fun. He really enjoys it. first quarter that was not the way these benches looked Georgia Tech was up and feeling good and they were leading three to nothing but since then an avalanche and I think you've got to give uh, Georgia Tech a couple more recruiting classes to build on and get a little bit more depth just like you have to give all these coaches in this conference a chance to catch up to Florida State they're making some strides Rogers will pick it up at the 15 Rogers good Heavens, does he get almost decapitated at the 35-yard line of battle? So let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Well, Ron, as we look at the watch, getting close to 10 o'clock Eastern time, and the cadets are getting ready for the second game of our nighttime doubleheader. May need all the cadets to stop Bo Morgan and Air Force. Each one conference loss is coming up next. Bo Morgan throwing one of the few passes he'll throw tonight because he'll be pitching it, but it's behind him. Yeah, a little under, bit of underhand passing game for that option. That's right. 42 to 3. Florida State 
looking awesome, but as Mike said, Bobby Bowden would like to get on the bus right now and head back to Tallahassee. They have had a lot of injuries. Holloman, the intended receiver, a little too hot. Well, the, the only good you come comes out of this ball game now is with backup quarterbacks and a lot of down the line players who practice every day for this opportunity to get better and get on tape so the coaches can evaluate them and grade them. They come in tomorrow, they'll see whether they got a plus or minus on every play and the, the grade that they arrive at for their performance. Dan Kendra on the sideline. Remember during the Clemson game, we talked about Coach Bowden said he is really a stickler for what he puts in his body. He goes and just spends hours in the grocery store making sure he buys healthy food. Shaw's pass is caught by Myers. John Myers, a freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, just outside of uh, Atlanta. He was a high school quarterback. And has had a problem with the hamstring injury, but they have wanted to get him in because he's really an outstanding athlete. Using him now at wide receiver. That was a good, another good throw by Brandon Shaw. The defensive ends resting a little bit. Peter Boulware and Renard Wilson had a big night. Putting pressure on Joe Hamilton and Brandon Shaw. And it's been a costly game for the Seminoles, although they are up there big. As you look on the bench, the uh, starting center, Kevin Long, with that ice pack on his neck. And let's check in with, uh, with Kevin Winslow. Ron Kevin Long, as you can see with the ice on his neck, has a burner, which is a pinched nerve that goes down his shoulder. He gets hit on that thing and gets aggravated. You lose feeling in the shoulder. It uh, it varies from player to player how long it takes them to recover. I doubt if we see him anymore today. Coach Bowden wants to get out of Atlanta as quickly as he can. Well, uh, next week, Wake Forest is uh, is up on the list for, for Florida State, and you have to wonder how many of these guys, Mike, that they will, you know, not even suit in that football game, not taking a chance. The Southern Mississippi is the week after that. Shaw's pass, nicely thrown to Middleton. Number four, Troy Saunders comes up to make the hit. Now here you see Florida State, as I said, next week against uh, Wake Forest. That's at home in uh, Southern Mississippi. Then they have Maryland. And then, of course, on the 30th, the Florida Gators are waiting. All in Florida, and of course, uh, they can't afford to look ahead to that 30th game because uh, Southern Miss, very capable, and on any given Saturday, and anybody's capable, but Southern Miss plays such good defense. It would be a good matchup. Busby winds up with a good night, although he had a very slow start. Hit Jerry Johnson, who is in at defensive tackle, replacing Canel Spain, who injured the knee. And he comes up with the sack. Second time they've gotten to the quarterback of Georgia Tech tonight. Fresh leg, Ron, just coming into the ball game. is fresh. He just uh, beat the block. The offensive guard and, uh, was able to take down Brandon Shaw. Never had a chance to throw the ball. Well, coming up immediately following our ball game, we'll be headed out to Colorado Springs. It's Air Force playing host to Colorado State. Easter fumbles the fair catch, then gets down on it. And it is dead at the 14. Take a break. 42 to 3, Florida State. Marjorie Turnbull has been effective as our state legislator. I've worked hard for Leon County. She's kept her promises and passed landmark legislation. It's a privilege and a responsibility that I take very seriously. But it's just a small part of her long and dedicated service to our community. You've got to know your community to be able to represent it. County Commissioner, Girl Scout Council, Council of Neighborhood Association. There's a lot to be done. Let's keep Marjorie Turnbull in the House of Representatives. She promised to improve education standards. Promise kept, promise broken. She actually voted to lower graduation standards, voted against smaller class sizes, and then she tried to change the state college system, an attempt Governor Childs called a disaster overall. She promised to be tough on crime, promise kept, promise broken. She actually voted to let criminals out before they even serve 50% of their sentence. We don't need another empty promise bureaucrat representing us. We need trust and accountability. We need Joe Griffin. Athlete. 
doesn't qualify you know, to be a sports center anchor. After the Olympic gold medal, the Rhodes Scholarship, 10 years with the New York Knicks, um, I was a U.S. Senator for 18 years. How about any writing experience? Well, I wrote three books, one on the bestseller list and the Tax Reform Act of 1986. But no TV writing. Uh, any experience in front of an audience? Well, I gave a keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. Uh, I meant a large audience. Oh. So 8.24 showing on the clock, and uh, it has been thorough by Florida State tonight. We kind of went sleepwalking through that first 15 minutes, but boy, in the second quarter, in the third, and now the fourth, they are uh, putting on a show. Kendra, it is caught. Then he dropped it. Did he hold on? No. They're going to say incomplete. That's Jermaine Stringer. I want to make one more point. We're talking about Peyton Manning. I'm not going to say I totally disagree with you on him coming out, but... If he did, the one reason that sticks out in my mind, I think he's got more leverage as far as the team that he might wind up with now than he would if he waited until after his senior year. Mark it down. He stays in. Okay. I mean, I know you got inside information. No, no, you no, no. no. I, don't, I don't have any inside information. Mark it down. He's no, coming right. back. Okay. That's, that's good, Mike. <laughs> that's my story. Fullback, Lamar Glenn. And Glenn, who is 6'4", 248, a sophomore out of Daytona Beach, rumbles out to the 35. It's a 21-yard run. Well, tonight's piece of players of the game are from Florida State, Warwick Dunn, 121 yards and a touchdown of 13 carries. And from Georgia Tech, Brian Wilkins, the uh, free safety, three interceptions, two pass breakups, and two tackles. And as part of their continued effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities on behalf of these athletes. Under eight minutes to play. Easter. Folks, that's the third team tailback. I start to say, you talk about depth. But look, he doesn't want to run out of bounds. He wants to keep the clock running. That's, I guarantee you, that's what they told him to do. And he's down to the 25. Wilcox finally stops it. 41 yards by Feaster. And he shows some jets also. Good speed. Makes some cuts. Sprint draw to the left. Good block. Now he's in the secondary. Ran away from the corner. Now breaks to the outside. Tries to get more yardage. Reggie Wilcox finally makes the tackle. Straight ahead for a couple of yards. Beaster might be an inch taller as well. He might be in the 5'9", five, 5'9 nine, five, nine and a half range. I'll tell you, when you can load up Ward Dunn and bring in Rock Preston and Dee Feaster, and then you got tight ends on this team. I was talking to Kellen Winslow today about this. Melvin Pearsall, Charlton, who are pretty good players, and they don't hardly play. I don't know how they keep them all happy because you got all these players, and Bobby Bob and his staff do a good job of explaining the role playing. And they, they accept their role here, and they play it, and they wait for their opportunity to be on the field. It's amazing. It's, it's great. Oh. Kendrick zings that pass. And that's uh, Lavernus Coles, who has it complete. That's good for 11 yards. Coming up next, Colorado State at the Air Force Academy. Gary Thorne and Rodney Gilmore standing by. Out in the Rockies. And, Ron, I'll tell you what's going through George O'Leary's mind right now as he stands on the sideline. He knows this is the, uh, this is the blueprint of what you want to be like, this Florida State football team. You've got to keep the players with speed size and uh, do the best job you can do in recruiting to build this same blueprint that Florida State has built. It's taken Florida St State a while. And nope. Georgia Tech is on the right path. Well, what you saw right there was Kendra just take it on a quarterback go, sneak on first down. And I think you can tell that, that uh, Bobby Bowden simply doesn't want to run up the score if he can avoid it. However, where he is, I don't know if he can avoid it. intention of throwing and he hurdles goes down at the one yard line. Oh, there's the Lawrence Taylor 
Turner yeah. coming out. Yes, he's down at the one. We'll give him a seven on style. Yeah, you, you just had to have a feeling he was going to do this. He's trying to get in that end zone, and you got to like the effort. you got to like the quarterback in him, the, trying to make something happen, just uh, <laughs> diving up in the air. Now well, they're going to bring the chain across the way. So much for your theory on the quarterback sneak. That's quarterback keep right. He had no intention to throw. No, but he had an intention of getting in that end zone. Yeah. Shoulder a little bit short. It's going to be third down. And the ball is uh, just at the one yard line. Five minutes, 17 seconds left in this one. 42 Florida State, three Georgia Tech. And that came early on an interception on the first play. Busby was picked off. One of three interceptions by Wilkins. Lamar Glenn and Feaster are the setbacks. And Kendra straight ahead, he scores. Mike Tirico, let's check in with you. Okay, Ron, thanks. On the right side of your screen, picture at Air Force Academy in Colorado. Colorado State taking on Air Force. In the Pacific Division of the WAC, Wyoming 6-0, Air Force is 4-1, Colorado State 4-1. So they're tied for second. An important game in the WAC. It has just kicked off. We'll keep you up to date. We'll send you back to Atlanta. Okay, Mike. Much congratulations on the sideline for Kendra and his mates as they come off. Extra point by Bentley is perfect. And it's 49-3. So let's take a timeout. 5-10 left in our ball game. Back with more after this. Hey! Here's something I... Joints. Uh, this tells you where you are, how far you'll go, and what you'll attain. When you get there, it gets out of your way. Space Saver Thin Line from Profile. Hey, this isn't much. This is smart. The new Proform Space Saver Treadmill, more compact than ever. Call for a 30-day in-home trial. Sunday, the women's hoop season tips off with a big-time doubleheader. At 2.30, Bama looks to avenge last year's tourney loss to Pac-10 powerhouse Stanford and scoring sensation Kate Starbird. At 5, Western Kentucky takes on dominating center Kara Walters and the Yukon Huskies. Alabama Stanford at 2.30 on ESPN. Western Kentucky UConn at 5 on ESPN2. The State Farm Women's Hall of Fame tip-off classic. Tomorrow. Would a man attack the peak of K2 if a remarkably soft pair of pants were placed there? Would a man tread the lip of a volcano for pants that were pure cotton yet wrinkle-free? Would a man brave the trackless Sahara for pants that were suitable for work and play? A man would, if he were a fool, because he could go to the store and say, yes, I'd like to try on the ultimate pant, new by Hager. Besides, your wife won't let you go to the Sahara anyway. We're back live in the Cliff Keen Arena. We're in between games with Ohio State leading Michigan two games to one. Welcome back, everybody. Chris Marlowe and Heather Gus. We weren't sure we're going to be here, but Ohio State uh, looking very, very strong. Michigan played well. Your impressions? Well, I think Ohio State goes into game four with the momentum. They're one of the best side-out teams in the country with a terminating attack. Their rally scoring certainly favors Ohio State. All right. As you know, we have a national football game on the way, Southern Miss and Florida State. We're going to continue to call the match. We're going to keep recording it. We'll fill you in as things go as Michigan battles Ohio State right down the wire in ESPN 2's coverage of Big Ten Women's Volleyball. Now we are going to send you to our studios in Bristol, Connecticut, ESPN2 College Football. Hope you enjoyed it. So long. All right, Chris and Heather, we thank you. And for those of you watching the Ohio State-Michigan Volleyball game, we will, won't leave you hanging. We'll keep you updated throughout our next contractual obligation. And that, of course, is college football here on ESPN2. Number three, Florida State hosting the Southern, the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi. But before we go down to Tallahassee, let's get you caught up on some very important scores. Ohio State, it wasn't easy, but the Buckeyes, number two in the country, go on to beat Indiana and clinch a bowl berth, a Rose Bowl berth, their first since 1984. Number one, Florida, Danny Werfel, the worst game of his freshman uh, of his career since his freshman year, 
but Freddie Taylor picked up the slack with three touchdown runs. North Carolina, number six in the country. This one just the final. Virginia upsets them 20 to 17 in a game on ESPN. Then Syracuse leading Army by a count of seven nothing. That game is in the first quarter. Next up, college.